Hello everyone! Because fall is coming so soon, I am so ready for Halloween and the spooky vibe. <laughs> That means I'm ready for scary movies. For this video, I thought I would do some short, spoiler-free horror movie reviews of movies that are currently on Netflix. I thought this would be a fun video to get you in the spooky spirit. There will be a timestamp in the description for each movie I'm going to review. Now, there are many horror movies or thriller movies on Netflix. I started and chose these movies from my Because You Watched list or my Suggested Movies list. Some of these movies I had heard of and others I read about for the first time right before I hit play. I pretty much picked the ones that sounded interesting and I did not base my viewing on the Netflix star rating. Because a lot of the horror movies on Netflix have horrible, horrible star ratings. For this, I chose five movies, so let's get started with my little spoiler-free reviews of these five Netflix movies. First up, we have The Unborn. Now, the description of this one is, a girl is haunted by frightening visions of a little boy, but the real nightmare is only just beginning. The cast includes Odette Annabelle, she's the main character, um, some other great actors in this, like Gary Oldman, um, Idris Elba, Jane Alexander, James Remar, just to name a couple. Um, it has a two-star rating on Netflix, and the movie itself is rated PG-13. So this movie is very much a creepy kid movie. We have the plot of the movie that is based around the little boy that I mentioned in the description. So of course we get those creepy and goosebumps worthy scenes featuring little kids, which can always be kind of terrifying. This movie did have some successful jump scares, as I call them. Did jump a few times, which I think is a great thing for a scary movie. My number one need when watching a scary movie is the backstory. I love the creepy storylines, the weird events, but if the backstory behind the creepy storyline isn't explained or if it's ignored, then it ruins the movie for me. Backstory is key in my book. This movie had a pretty good backstory, so I was pleased in that aspect. We learn why these things are happening and we describe it in a successful way, so thumbs up for that part. Specific creepiness within this movie, we do experience a couple mirror shots that can be creepy depending on how the scene is set up. We also have a bit of the grudge crawling or body moving. I've always called it the grudge crawling because that was like the first movie I ever saw the body twisting in, so ever since it's been the grudge crawling to me. I know that that movement freaks a lot of people out. I knew a couple people in high school that were scared to death of those movements. This movie also features some religious aspects to it, also some exorcism stuff, so if you're sensitive to that type of material, or if you want to avoid those type of things, this movie might not be for you. Things I did not care for in this movie. Constantly seeing the main character in her underwear or in the shower is just unneeded for me. I know, I know, it's a typical horror movie move. But it's pointless to me when we could be focusing on the actual storyline, and not this girl's ass. But hey, what do I know? Maybe you would like to watch the girl's ass. Of course, like every movie, the acting is super important, and I feel like in horror movies, sometimes we can get some really, really bad acting. There was a bit of questionable acting in this one for me, mostly by the main character. She was okay, but some of her line delivery seemed a little awkward to me, didn't really seem believable. She did an okay job at looking scared throughout the film, so I guess that's good. It was definitely not some of the worst horror movie acting I've seen, it was just a little awkward. This movie also featured a really weird bug scene that was kind of weird to me, but overall I enjoyed this movie. I thought the storyline was very interesting and it kept me engaged, probably because we kept learning more about the backstory, which I totally dig on. I enjoyed the ending as well and I thought everything was connected very nicely. So would I recommend this movie to get you in the creepy spooky spirit? Yes or no? Yes, I would recommend this movie to give you a couple good jumps and some good goosebumps. Our next movie is The Ward. The description is, in this chilling thriller from director John Carpenter, a young woman is sent to a mental institution with a past as dark and hated as her own. The cast includes Amber Heard, Mammy Gummer, Daniel Panabecker, and others. So the Netflix rating on this is two and a half stars, and the movie's actual rating is R. This movie is set in 1966, so it's very much a retro 60s mental ward movie. Fun fact, in case you didn't know, John Carpenter is also the director of the original Halloween from 1978, as well as Christine and others. I didn't find this movie overly scary as I found it interesting. The plot kind of pulled me in and I wanted to learn more. The movie is set in a mental hospital, so it had that potential to really creep me out, but I don't think I really got that fear aspect from it. 
just as kind of another reference, when I think to the second season of American Horror Story set in the asylum, there was some really freaky and creepy stuff in that season, and I don't think this movie really had that creepy mental ward feel to it. Instead of feeling scared, I was just more interested in the characters and learning about why they are the way they are. I wanted to learn more of the secrets, if you will. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, wanting to learn more about the storyline and having it pull you in. I just could have been a little more scared because it had all that potential to be super creepy and I just wasn't scared while watching it. There were a few jump scares, but as I said, I just personally wouldn't classify this as overly scary. It's more of a thriller with hints of the supernatural, I guess you could say. As I said, backstory is super important to me and we did touch on this a little bit and we kind of tied up some loose ends on the storyline and understood where the characters were coming from. I was very pleased with the cast. I'm familiar with most of the main characters in this, so I've seen them from other things, and I think they did a fantastic job in this movie specifically. Amber Heard, she was like the main character, and I believe this is actually the first movie I've ever seen of hers, and she did a really good job too. This movie does feature classic mental institution scenes or treatments, like electrocution, lobotomies, and things like that. So if you are sensitive to that, fair warning. There are some hokey parts, I would say, relating to the supernatural parts of this movie. I mean, it's okay and it's kind of summed up in the end, but they were still a little hokey to me. The end was interesting and I definitely didn't see it coming, which is good. I prefer to be surprised in a horror movie than to guess the ending. I thought the ending was very creative and I'm not sure that I've seen something like it before. So yes, I would recommend this movie if you like psychological thrillers. Next up, we have the movie Don't Blink. The description is, 10 friends are stranded at a secluded and deserted mountain resort where they must solve the deadly mystery surrounding the abandoned lodge. The cast is Brian Austin Green, Mina Survey, Zach Ward, just to name a few. The star rating on Netflix is a one and a half, ouch. And the movie itself is not rated. Basically, this movie is a standard, a bunch of friends go out in the woods and shit starts happening and you're kind of stuck yelling at the screen, go home, don't stay there, just go home. Needs to be said, this movie did not scare me at all. I didn't jump once or feel creeped out. So it is more of a mess with your head thriller movie than it is a scary movie. You really are just wondering what the hell is happening throughout the entire movie. There were some hilarious parts in this movie. I have to say I was rolling with laughter through a lot of it because it was genuinely funny, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing when it's supposed to be like a thriller, scary movie and I was thinking it was more of a comedy. Not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but hey, it was funny. I'm going to say that the actors were all pretty good, but the storyline was totally lacking for me. Putting it briefly, like nothing really happened in the movie. It's a very slow paced. I mean honestly the comedy is what kept me engaged. It's really lame writing in it too that had me wondering why the characters were doing this, why we had to do that. So if you're looking for a real action thriller movie this is definitely not for you. <laughs> While the ending can be assumed, we do not get a straight answer, which I know can bug a lot of people. There are various hints as to what has been happening throughout the movie and the ending, but still we do not get a straight answer as to what has happened. We only have to take the hints and assume. Overall, this movie did give me a lot of laughs, but I would not add it to my horror movie playlist. I doubt I will ever watch this movie again. So would I recommend this to get you in the spooky spirit? Eh, I'm gonna say no. If you're really bored and you want something to mess with your head for a little bit and to get a few laughs, I mean, I guess you could watch it then. But I think there are way better thrillers out there and this movie will definitely not get you in the spooky spirit. Next up, we have The Curse of Sleeping Beauty. The description on this one is a man having a recurring nightmare about a beautiful sleeping girl he must awaken with a kiss inherits a decaying mansion from his mysterious uncle. They cast Ethan Peck, Natalie Hall, India Isley, just to name a few. It has a one and a sliver of a star rating. <laughs> on Netflix and the film itself is not rated. But first off, I have to say one of my biggest pet peeves about movies, horror movies especially, is when they're so dark you can't see what's happening. I understand the director is going for that scary feel, but if I can't even see what's happening in the scene, there's no way I'm gonna be scared by it. And this movie was so dark. So many of the scenes were hard to see anything at all. I couldn't see the sets. I could barely see the actors. It just was so dark. I didn't even know what was going on. This movie does have a fantasy feel to it. It does hint at the sleeping beauty, but in no way is this a fairy tale movie. 
I did see in the credits that this movie is based on a comic, but I know nothing about this comic, never heard of it, so the comic itself did not reference this review in any way. I guess there's some potential jump scares in this, but as I said, it's so dark, it's hard to even see what's going on to see the jump scare. And those scenes where you can see the scary bits didn't really do much for me. This movie had a lot of mannequins and statues in it, which is odd, especially since we never get a real reason as to why. I'd say there was a little bit of that weird grudge body twisting bits, which I know can freak some people out. The acting was okay. As I said, in horror movies we can get some really cheesy or bad acting, but the cast in this did okay. I just had other problems with this film. I will outright say that this movie really disappointed me. It had a lot of potential for a great backstory but it all kind of failed. They set up a lot of potential backstory with the house or the family line, the curse, all of these different things, but then they never tied them together or gave us straight answers as to how these things were connected, why these things were happening, why did this happen, why did this? Like, it didn't give us any sort of answers. The backstory potential doesn't really matter if you don't finish telling us what the backstory is. And also kind of sad, I guess the end of the movie within like the first 20 minutes of the film. So when the storyline is just kind of boring like that, I had no real surprises and it didn't keep me entertained whatsoever. To the ending, we receive no sort of answers, no idea what's happening, what's going on, why is this ending this way? It was very irritating. So no, I would not recommend you watch this movie. I think it was kind of a waste of time. On to our final movie called Would You Rather. The description is, in need of cash to help her sick brother, a young woman agrees to take part in a lethal winner-takes-all parlor game hosted by a sadistic millionaire. The cast includes Brittany Snow, Jeffrey Combs, Jonathan Coyne, just to name a few. The movie is rated a two and a half star on Netflix. I personally believe it deserves a higher star rating. And the movie itself is not rated. I really enjoyed this movie. This movie is totally messed up, but I really enjoyed it and I thought it was something new. While we were watching this, we did keep referencing the movie Rat Race, if you're familiar with that comedy. It kind of has the rich people messing with ordinary people's lives feel to it. But this movie is much more messed up than Rat Race. Rat Race is hilarious and this is some fucked up shit. <laughs> I also did think to The Purge, you know, with the richer people messing with the not so rich people, kind of that feel. But yes, this movie is surrounding a psychotic rich family that is toying with people's lives, offering them a chance to improve their lives, but the stakes are way, way high. As I said, this movie is messed up. I won't stop saying that. It is a very messed up movie, but it's super suspenseful too. Kept me on the edge of my seat throughout the entire film. It does feature violent scenes or scenes relating to torture. So if that's something that you're not comfortable with, I would definitely skip this movie. Acting I thought was fantastic. I thought the whole cast was really great. Brittany Snow, who is the main character, did a wonderful job. I was very pleased with the acting in this movie. This movie doesn't really have the jump scares because it's really more of a suspenseful thriller than a boo scary ghost movie. But it could scare you and it definitely draws the viewer in because you don't know what's going to happen next. I pretty much enjoyed this movie start to finish. I would highly recommend this movie and I will probably watch it again at some point in my life. Thank you so much for watching these little Netflix movie reviews. If you would like to see more of these multi-movie reviews, be sure to give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment below. We still have plenty of time before Halloween to get you in your spooky spirit, and there's a lot of horror and thriller movies on Netflix that I can review. So be sure to let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Subscribe for more content, guys, and I will see you on the next video. Bye!